Child Protection Week commemorated in the country annually and the sole purpose is to raise awareness around the rights of children. South Africa's children have been under siege in the last couple of years with more violence, exploitation included in their abuse. Today, the Department of Social Development, in partnership with USAID, is launching a campaign called CHOMI. This is a social and behavioral change program and is being launched in Fixburg in the Free State. Let's find out more about this campaign and we'll speak now to the Deputy Minister of Social Development, Henrietta Bohopanezulu. Deputy Minister, thank you very much for your time. Let's launch straight into the CHOMI campaign. What is this program about and importantly, the intended outcomes? Uh, let me greet Hi Bochomi and invest in our future and protect us today. Uh, protecting children um, during COVID and beyond without leaving anyone behind. Um, Tommy, it's a program that focuses on boys and girls between the ages of 10 and 14. Mm. Our intended outcomes is obviously firstly to create a platform, a safe space for children to talk about their issues. It is for us to educate children on issues around drugs, teenage pregnancy, uh, sex and sexuality, uh, life skills, bullying, um, and we base all that on the African idioms as well as on the indigenous games. Yeah. So that's the back um, of a tool. Well, let's talk about the reason you have chosen the town of Fixburg in the Free State as the launch pad for this campaign. There's a specific reason, isn't it? Explain that to us. Yeah, well, uh, we've launched Chomi in 2020, by the way. So now we're doing the road shows. Uh, Chomi is one of our Child Protection Week activities. Today we are focusing on child labor, uh, undocumented children and stateless children. Mm. So we all know that uh, Fixbeck, as it's known as the Cherry City, uh, it's right at the border of Lesotho, so you see a lot of children in, from Lesotho coming to work in the farms. Mm. But we also see a lot of children really uh, not having, um, being child-headed households, not because the parents are not there, uh, passed on, but the parents have gone to, to Johannesburg to look for greener pastures, yeah. either working in mines or working in our houses, and you find that um, children don't have anyone they must raise themselves but the third the other aspect is that undocumented children the parents are both pursued to they are in south africa and then they give birth to a child we give them an acknowledgement of birth but they must go register the child in lesotho they don't do that so um constitutionally a child goes to school but when they get to matric they must have an id and they lose the uh, acknowledgement of birth because that is what the child needs at 18 for the child to be able to choose which country they belong to. Do they want the citizenship of South Africa or the citizenship of Lesotho? Yeah. So we're dealing with all those aspects and you, hence fix it. You, you've touched on uh, so many aspects and all of them are very concerning. Child labor undocumented or stateless children in my mind the only thing that's ringing right now is the level of abuse exploitation how prevalent is that very um let us not just say fix back but the whole of south africa mm. we are abusing children i mean yesterday for an example uh between i was doing the statistics for the whole country uh, for um, 10 to 12 year olds, uh, girls that fell pregnant, we're answering a parliamentary question. Mm. And just this year, January to March, for this quarter, which is the fourth quarter, um, we have 7,880 10, 10 to 12 year old pregnant girls. My goodness. Just in this then uh, let's look and think about Palisa, but let's think about many Palisas 
who died uh, during this, the minister of police issued the statistics. And the statistics shows that the, the crimes against children are growing. Mm-hmm. But let me also say to uh, yourself, on Monday, I, Sunday, I opened um, the Child Protection Week in one of our secure care facilities. And I was having a dialogue with children because those are what we used to call juvenile prisons. So any child that's in conflict with the law under the age of 18 is uh, handed over to social development. And to create positive, we removed it from juvenile prison and we called it Child and With Care Workers. And the children that are there, I mean, it's 10-year-old, 11-year-old. Let me say the eldest was 16, Mm. girls and boys. And they've committed terrible crimes. You've got eight of them who've murdered. Wow. You've got four of them under 15 who've raped. You have, so, sitting and having a dialogue with those children and, and, and being the mother, and I was the only one that they told the truth to. Even the social workers did not know, you know, what their crimes are. Mm. But the kids found somebody because we, I created a safe space. And they also, you know, for the first time, somebody cared enough. Now we've got 300 plus uh, secure uh, child and youth care centers for um, children in conflict with the law. I'm telling you about one in Amatuba, in, in Amatatin, in Newcastle. That's just the one that where I launched because we talk about children. I've decided to leave no one behind, but also to reach the furthest first. Yeah. And we know child children in conflict with the law, just like children who work in the farms, we somehow forget and, 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 and not remember that they exist. Yeah. Well, Deputy Minister, let's wrap up this conversation with this question because all of these campaigns that you are running, there's another one that is tied to Chomi, and it's called You Only Live Once, or YOLO for short. Yeah. These are programs mm. that, whose ultimate goals, and you'll correct me if I'm wrong here, the ultimate goal is to eliminate the spread of HIV and AIDS among young people. And as you've already mentioned, as young as a 10-year-old, they are already being exploited sexually, the prevalence of this virus among that age group, 10, 14? Uh, For the girls, it's quite high. For the boys, it's very low, which gives you the indication that uh, our young children are not necessarily having sex with their peers. So that is one of the painful things. Last year, we were sitting uh, for girls... um, 14 to 18, we were sitting at 17%, and now we are sitting at 39%. So you've got that particular age group growing, but what is also becoming clear, you have now, um, the boys are still sitting at uh, 4.2%, and uh, now we are seeing men that you expect to be in uh, uh, marriages uh, of the ages of 25 to 45 uh, is going up. But all the programs, um, HIV is but one element, drugs is one element, alcohol is another. So all of these programs, from Dizala, which is 7 to 9, Chomi, 10 to 14, Young Yolo, 15 to 18, Yolo, 19 to 24. Uh, Families Matters, the end of uh, boy, men and boys championing change, but to mention a few, their core intention is to create a better South Africa. Yeah. Where we'll have a better men from the boys championing change, we're cultivating a better man that will never abuse women. So we reduce gender based violence and femicide, teenage pregnancy for the girls, you know, each and every program is intended to create a better South Africa. Well, Deputy Minister, let me thank you for your time and indeed your efforts. And these are efforts.
that must be supported. So thank you for your effort. Henrietta Bohopane Zulu, Deputy Minister of Social Development there.